Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we're gonna do some watercolor painting. This is a little painting I did this weekend of some shells. I bought a bag of shells at the Dollar General. I'd never been in there before and it uh, had a bunch of neat little things, but I bought a bag of shells and I thought they would make really fun watercolor um, images, watercolor is examples, things to paint, I guess. And um, I painted this series of five here. Um, and this took a while, it took probably about 45 minutes. So if anybody would like a tutorial on this, let me know in the comments below. But I thought today I would just do one shell, a different shell, so that if you guys do want this, then I won't teach you the same thing twice. Um, and I just, I just think it's important to paint things that you have physically in front of you, because then you can actually lift it up and look at the details really closely. And it just really helps. Uh, so for right now, I am going to paint, I think I'm going to do this shell here, because I just think it has some cool dimension and I'll just move those out of the way and I'm just gonna set it right there I'll be seeing it from slightly a different angle than you are because I'll be seeing it from the side and we're gonna sketch together um, we're gonna start with kind of that bulbous shape there the biggest section of the shell is kind of an oval like shape and then it kind of goes down to like a little bit of a teardrop at the end Okay, and then we got another, we got another bump, comes up like this, I think I want this bottom part over a little bit more. I'm not going to worry about like sketchy lines, I think it's kind of charming sometimes on a watercolor. And then we've got this one piece up there, just like that. I might end up putting something else in there because it doesn't really fill up the paper, but um, or I could just maybe extend, extend it out a little bit. I'm going to have to do a little erasing anyway, so I'm just going to fatten it up. So I'm gonna start by fattening up the biggest part of it, and then I'm gonna fatten up this part, and then we'll put this little end back on there. There. Okay, so just very gently with a white eraser, and you can even pick these up at the dollar stores, they're pretty inexpensive. Um, like you can get like six at a dollar store, I think this one probably cost like 89 cents at the art store. Um, but the, the white plastic ones just don't damage your paper, they're very gentle. I don't like to do a ton of erasing on watercolor paper, but um, but that's fine. And we're gonna start with the unifying wash. So for this, I want it to kind of be like a ochre color. So that's what we're gonna do. And I'm using my Mission Gold uh, Perfect Pan paints because um, I took them with me on a um, on a trip with. Uh, with the eighth grade, uh, seventh grade class, and I just really enjoyed having them. So I'm taking a little burnt umber, and a little yellow ochre. So I make kind of like a, a taupey color and lots of water with that. And I'm gonna give it a wash. Now, since this is really watery, it's probably going to dry quite a bit lighter. And I will be uh, blotting for some highlights too. And I didn't wet the paper first because I knew I was using a pretty juicy brush and, um, and really juicy paint, so it's just gonna make it so it doesn't take quite so long to dry. Okay, and then with my paper towel, I am going to lift up here, just kind of give it a little bit of highlight and roundness. And then I think I wanna make a little bit of a shadow color. I'm gonna do some ultramarine and some burnt umber. And it's because the burnt sienna in this in this set has um, a gold, like a, has has a, a goldish undertone and it doesn't, it doesn't give me, it gives me more greens when I try to mix a brown with that. So that's, that's one thing I don't like about this set, but the burnt umber is really good. It acts like a burnt sienna for my mixing. And I'm just gonna give a little bit on the backside where it is a little bit more shady and do a little bit more right up there. And I'm noticing I'm getting a little bit of backwash there, and I think it's because I'm working on a Strathmore greeting card, and those tend to be a little more sized, but I'm just gonna go over it with a... Oops, I just lifted it up and made it worse. That's all right. I should, what I should have done is, um, and we can fix this, so I'll show you how to fix it. What I should have done was, wet, was uh, put the shadow in before I had blotted, because I changed the, um, I changed how wet the entire area was. So when you have a wet area and a dry area contacting with each other, you end up with, um, you end up with uh, the chance for blooms, especially on a paper that is 
that is heavily sized, like the Strathmore wood pulp uh, greeting cards. It doesn't happen so much on cotton because cotton will absorb your water and keep it a little bit more, um, a little bit more even. Okay, so I just mixed up a little bit more of that shadow color and I'm putting that in. And it's not a shiny shell, so I don't care if I get a little texture on it. I think that'll actually look kind of nice. And now I'll go back in and lift. Give it that roundness. There we go. Okay, now we're gonna let this dry and then we're gonna do our shadow on the table. While that was drying, I mixed up more ultramarine blue and burnt umber and got this nice dark color here. I might make it a little bit more blue because then it will look a little more shadowy. So there's two ways you can do it. You can either wet the area you want the shadow to be in, or you can paint it in with the paint and then use a damp, clean brush to drag it out, which I think that's what we're going to do. Um, I'm going to start right up close to the shell with my darkest paint because it's always darkest where it touches the object that is casting the shadow. Now, as this top part of the shell kind of pulls away from the surface, from the table, you've got more space and you've also got a little bit of a lighter look. So I'm just fattening this up here over by the belly of the shell, trying to keep that whole area wet until I'm ready to, to pull out a shadow, to pull out the softer area. Now I'm cleaning my brush, just kind of pinching off the excess, and I am going along the edge and softening that. If you do get, you shouldn't get any, um, any backwashing because um, you squeeze the excess water out of your brush. But if you do, you can just go wipe your brush off really good, go in and, and you can soak up any puddles. If you need to add more paint, you can do that too. Um, but try not to fuss with it. I think shadows look best when you haven't fussed with them. Now for the spots on the, um, on the shell itself, I'm going to use some burnt umber on its own. I'm going to have some yellow ochre handy. I think I'll first do the spots with like the mostly a yellow ochre with just a little bit of burnt sienna because I kind of have like this uh, golden rim and I'm going to start. They kind of come in like a, uh, they kind of go, they have a pattern. They kind of work around in like a row. So I'm just going to do all these, uh, she, all these, spots lighter first. Go up here and this helps give you that round look too. It helps keep that like roundish um, shell shape. And just try to get those interesting, interesting uh, unique patterns. I switched brushes. I like this brush uh, better. This is the Mimic Squirrel. It's my favorite faux uh, fur brush. Um, I like it because I don't. I feel like it just is very responsive. It's almost just like an extension of my of my hand. So this you've got almost like a couple little rows. You've got some really short ones, and you've got the longer ones. And then there's not much up here, just a little bit. And I'm just and see this is the thing about having it right there in front of you. You can pick it up and you can look at it and you can see what you really have. Um, if you're like, oh boy, I must have turned it. I can't really see what's going over there. I could see there's some more uh, spots over there. Now the thing I notice is that the spots are darker on the bottom and they get lighter as they go up. So maybe that has something to do with the age of the shell. I'm not sure, but, um, but it's the, those are the things you notice when you are observing it from life. I'm going to let this dry and then we're going to go on with darker spots. Okay, that's dry. So we're going in with the darker spots. I'm using just the burnt umber on its own. Um, if I do need to go in darker, I can always do that by adding some, um, adding a little bit of ultramarine blue into that. But I think I'd rather just keep it kind of pure to begin and then see what I need as I go. And you can use whatever watercolor you have. You don't have to use the same brand. Um, if you have this brand and you have the bulletproof glass palette, I will let you know that just use it a few times. I know some people sanded theirs to, um, to try to get it to the paint not to beat up, but I found just using it a couple times was all it needed and then it just started to behave. So I really wouldn't sand it um, just because I'm afraid that you might get all these little scratches that will stain if you do that. So... I'm not as particular as, as a lot of people with their plastic palettes. Um, I like them because they're lightweight and easy to use and easy to clean and big and lightweight. Um, but some people are very particular and I just wanted to let you know that. 
and not so much up here. In fact, I'm going to add a little bit of what more water to that to do these ones up here because and get in that little that yellow ochre a little bit because these should be a little bit lighter up in this portion. And there, that's drying really quick. I feel like I might want a little something over there. And then like the more you can observe it, it's really helpful because then you can see, like if you have that, you can really look at it and uh, make sure you're getting everything you need into your picture. Um, you can It's really a lot easier to get something with a lot of detail when you can actually look at the thing that you're painting, like physically pick it up and look at it. And for a buck, I mean, hey. Uh, you do have to be careful though, because there were a lot of bags that had broken shells and the, the cashier was not very gentle and she kind of slammed the uh, the bag down and broke like she broke this beautiful one. I was so sad that this one got broke. But then it was kind of interesting with the with the being able to see into the inside. And then when I painted it here, I really kind of like that. But still, I'd rather have not had it broken. <laughs> so, you know, kind of keep that in mind if you're buying shells at a craft store or at a dollar store or whatever. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do, I think maybe I will take a little bit of ultramarine blue and the burnt umber and see if I want to just do some slightly darker spots just to give that added extra bit of depth. It dried so quick I didn't have to stop and let it dry or, or heat it or anything, so. And I'm only doing it like to these ones down here. I'm not, I don't want to add it everywhere because I think that um, kind of defeats the realism of it. And now we can go in with some more shadows. I feel like I need a little shadow where this big area is kind of on top of the little area. And I'm going to just take some of that mixed um, gray, which is the burnt umber and the ultramarine blue, and I'm just picking up some of that. Um, yellow ochre color there. I have to be careful. I'm going to blot off any excess moisture from my brush because I don't want to smear any of the paint underneath and I haven't, you know, gone back and heat set it, but I do want to add a little bit more shadow. I'm just going to try, since this is a really soft brush, hopefully I can glaze. So I don't really give it that much time to dry. I'm just hoping I can sneak a glaze in there, which is working all right. I think I will, will dry the rest of the shell though, just to be safe. Okay, and now I'm feeling like I want more of a bluish gray shadow over there. So I'm just gonna go over here where I have way more bluish gray in the mix. And I'm gonna grab that and kind of go along here. And since we're using for the shadow the same color we, colors we have been using, um, it really shouldn't be a problem if it does lift up a little bit here and there because it's colors we've already used. And I'm trying to avoid adding um, too much in the middle here because I want that to stay brighter and make it feel, make the shadow feel, the shell feel a little bit rounder. But again, on this paper, it does want to lift. The other example I did was on, of uh, the other shells was on Fabriano 100% cotton cold press and that, you know, it just doesn't want to lift on me so much because the, uh, the paper's cotton and it's not going to, um, it just, it just behaves a little bit better, I guess. And I do want to just enhance that shadow a little bit there. Let me divide it up there a little bit. And um, that's pretty much it. I feel like I might want to do a little bit more with the shadow on the table just because it's a little rough. At least maybe add a little bit more up close to the shell. And I'm going to put turn it so it's more comfortable the way I'm, I'm looking at it. And I'm just giving it a crisper line. And I'm going to lift up that puddle. There we go. And then you do actually see a little bit of like a ghost shadow. And I'm thinking I might want to put that in there. I'm just not sure. I'm going to try it. I'm just going to see if I can get that little ghost of a shadow in there. I, bl I blotted my brush so that I didn't end up with too much water. And then you do get a little bit of a ghost out here. So I'm just very gently putting that in. Super, super light, super, super light paint. 
All right, and there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, very quick and easy. Um, like I said, if you want to see this one, let me know in the comments below. It'll either be a long tutorial that'll be about 45 minutes long, or it will be a speed paint. So let me know your preference on that as well. I know some of you guys like some and some like the other, so just let me know in the comments below. And now I have a brand new greeting card to stick in my shop to sell for $7. <laughs> That's what I do with these greeting cards, isn't that silly? And I just put, a, I just put my... Um, initials and the date and that's how I finish it off. I want to thank you so much for watching. Please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video and until next time, happy crafting!